One, two, three. Give it back up for Dr. Louise. You know, I was just sharing with, uh, with uh, I was going to say coach, uh, with Pastor Mauricio how we're big football fans, so you have to forgive me. It's, it's, uh, we, we really, really enjoy football, but I was just sharing how wonderful and how uh, connected all of you are. And that's just hard. You know, I'm, I'm, I've always been in big churches <clears throat> all the time. And, and it's just, you know, you, you see a, a smaller group of people that are really connected and then everyone else just kind of comes in and goes. But I can really sense that there is a true sense of, uh, of connection. And usually we're going to connect when there's leadership. So that's pretty, that's very, very valuable. Please give Pastor Mauricio, Mauricio another round of applause. So, you know, when, when, I, when I talk about this, I've been, I have a group right now that I've been working with for about 10 and a half years. And I speak to them every Monday and every Wednesday. I do leadership every Monday and Wednesday from 9 to 11. And I've been doing this for 10 and a half years just with this one group. And there's still people that don't understand it. So if, if you get it, that you are unbelievable. But I encourage you to seek and research and find out for yourself. And I'll give you names because when you really understand how powerful, when you really understand how powerful this right here is, right? Okay. I'm not an artist, but who can tell me what that is? Say it? No. Oh, I thought you said something. Okay. So this is the brain. And this is your spinal cord. I, I know I, I knew, no one gets it. This is your brain. This is spinal cord. These are nerves. And this is your sacrum, okay? So um, maybe the chiropractor doctor, maybe he probably would have got it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. When you, when, you find out, when you find out how powerful it is and how information flows from above, down, inside, out, right? It's a philosophy. It's a, it's a philosophy. It's called the ADIO principle, above, down, inside, out. And one of the biggest challenges we have is that when this information flows from above, down, inside, out, unfortunately, many people's filters stops the greatness. Many people's filters stops your blessings, right? And so it takes a little bit, it takes a little bit to, to like kind of just, you know, just kind of open that because it makes you feel very awkward. It makes you feel very, very uncomfortable. So let me give you some, some steps. Let me give you some keys, some principles on how you can increase your energy and decrease your duality, okay? So what we want to do is we want to increase our energy, okay? Remember, energy is not sought, taught about. Energy is what? Energy is what? Energy is what? Energy is what? Energy is caught, okay? Energy is not sought, taught about. Energy is caught. And we want to decrease our duality, Right? I believe it's the book of James. It says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways, right? So you want to minimize your duality. You want to make your yeses mean yes and your noes mean no. Most, I don't want to say most, many men are at work thinking about their family and when they're with their family, they're thinking about their work. So they're never where they're supposed to be, right? It's a game that we play. It's the game of tomorrow, yesterday. Tomorrow, yesterday, and today. Most people live their lives in yesterday, right? And what's in yesterday? And yesterday is, your, is the failures. It's the setbacks. It's the opportunities. Some people live their lives in the tomorrow, What's in the tomorrow? There's uncertainty. There's panic. There's anxiety, right? Anxiety is like a buzzword right now. Anxiety, depression, right? But your power is in today. What I call the present time consciousness. It's in the moment. It's the ability to be where you are when you are. And it's very challenging because our thoughts are continuously racing, right? Some of you may be thinking about lunch. (laughs) 
Some of you may be thinking about the Alabama game when you get home. Come on. <laughs> right? so, some of you may be thinking about, you know, uh, gosh, his head is so shiny with those lights. Right? Some of you may be thinking, so, so you're either in tomorrow or you're in yesterday. My mentor said this. He said, your life will be defined by a vision of the future or a memory of the past. And if you live by a memory of the past, you'll never be a co-creator. I repeat this again. Your life will be defined by a vision of the future or a memory of the past. And if you continuously live in the past, we can never be co-creators. I talked about this. I said, who wants to be a better husband? Who wants to be a better son? Who wants to be better? That means we got to go and co-create something brand new. So what is the key that unlocks the door to be in the present moment? What's the key? I want to give you the key. What is the key? Okay, I'm going to give you first key key number one. What is the key that unlocks the door to the present moment? And it's so simple, and that key is called gratitude. Gratitude is the key. Gratitude. Gratitude is the key that unlocks the door to the present moment. When you are in in a state of gratitude, there is no fear. The only place... The only place that there is no fear is in the present time consciousness. If we can discipline our mind, right? If we can discipline our mind to stay where we are, we will not have anxiety and we will not have frustration. If you feel frustrated, it's because you're not in the present moment. If you feel anxious, it's because you're not in the present moment. If you're angry, it's because anger is a secondary emotion of fear. It's because you're not in the present moment. If you feel put down, you're not in the present moment. Gratitude is what puts you in that present moment. Now, you don't have to be a millionaire to be grateful. You don't have to have the perfect relationship to be grateful. You can be grateful because you're in this room. You can be grateful because you have shoes to wear, right? The little boy that was in line at the store crying because... He didn't have shoes until he looked at the little girl in front of him who didn't have feet. It's all perspective. It's all perspective, right? So gratitude. So do me a favor. Write five things that you're grateful for right now. Five things. Then give yourself a few seconds to think about these five things that you are grateful for. Five, five things that you are truly grateful for. Remember, a short pencil goes a, long, a lot further than a long memory. So you want to you wanna take these. I'm, I'm, I'm an avid note taker. If you look at my iPhone, I mean, I'm, I'm fr- I have notes. If something happens to my phone, I'm in trouble. I have notes after notes after notes after notes after notes. Sometimes I wish I could tell pastors I'm not like, I'm not like uh, on, on Instagram or anything. I'm like taking notes on my phone because sometimes people, speakers will look at me like, what are you doing? I'm, I'm, I'm writing notes on my phone because then I can send them to myself and, and they, they're just part of me. I'm, I always have my phone with me. So what are five things that you're grateful for? Five things. Five simple things. And this is part of the MVP, meditation visualization and prayer part of the meditation is is the gratitude right what are you grateful for you know grateful that you can walk grateful that you can talk grateful that you have blood run through your veins grateful that you have the capacity to think grateful that you live in this beautiful country that anyone with grit and desire can become whatever they want grateful for the sake of opportunity every every day is on every person is an opportunity grateful that you can that you can declare your beliefs grateful that you can gather together here yes as one mind as a collective the power of collective consciousness this group right here can change the world the power of collective consciousness is so incredibly powerful so what are you grateful for sure what's what's a couple things anybody it doesn't matter who it is my friend grateful that you're better today than yesterday excellent excellent what's another one perfect so you're 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 grateful that you can change something in your life. Excellent. You're gr- hey, hey, please, we have to be grateful for our wife. Absolutely. Young son? You're grateful for music. Okay, do you play music or you like music? Both? Okay, my man. Grateful for my health. I'm grateful for your biceps. Because, <laughs> you, uh, I mean, they look like 25 inches back there, so I'm grateful for your biceps. Okay, <laughs> you got some big old biceps. Yeah, there's uh, uh, things to be grateful for, right? You know, what I mean, there's always there's always something 
that we could, we could be grateful for. Up, over there? Yeah. My kids? Your children, absolutely. Your two. One and three. Three. One, three, and five. five. Wow. Okay. That's excellent. Great. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. That's what, that's what wow meant. I didn't want to say I'm praying. I just said wow. Uh-huh. Salvation. Amen. Amen. See all those things. Now, now the, my friend. Your son is here. There you go. Absolutely. Absolutely. The thing about it is how, how conscious are we of these things? You know, how conscious are we of these things? You know, in, in, my, in my routine, I wake up. Usually, I wake up between 4.30 and 5, and I go to the gym. We have a gym at my home. I go to the gym. I always, I always take a second and I look, I look at my wife when she's a, still asleep. And I just say, thank you, God. Thank you for her health. Thank you for her well-being. Thank you for her accepting me for who I am with all my flaws. Thank you for her patience, right? And then, and then when, because every morning we, we, do, we, do, we trade, and then my son walks out, he walks. And, you know, I'm thankful that here's a 21-year-old ma- young man that wakes up early to start what he's, what he's passionate about. I'm thankful for that. Then I see my two little ones cross the hallway, and I'm thankful that they wake up with joy in their heart, with peace in their mind, right? I, I'm thankful that, that, they, that they like for us to take them home. I'm thankful that they don't squirm out of the car when I lean over to kiss them in front of all their high school friends. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that they're not embarrassed. I'm thankful they're not ashamed. And you know how that makes me feel? I'm, I'm a winner. I won already. Forget anything of the monetary stuff. That's, that's fun. But it's like that is how you win. Key number one is gratitude. Key number two is clarity. Clarity. Everybody repeat this because this is my, if there is a mantra, if there is a mantra, if there's something that I have said 100 million times, okay, if if there's a quote that I have shared a hundred gazillion times because that's my quote what is it oh, or the when the promise when the promise is clear the price is easy don't negotiate your promise don't negotiate your price magnify your promise i repeat this again when the promise is clear the price is easy don't negotiate your price. Magnify your promise. The reason people, what's that? Oh, the reason people don't pay the price is because they don't see it. My mentor told me this. He said, the vitality of your life is directly proportional to the vividness of your vision. I repeat this. The vitality of your life, the energy of your life is directly proportional to the vividness, the clarity of your vision. I'm 54 years young. I remember the tube TVs that if you stood here, you're green in the middle, you're red and over here, you're blue. Right. Because the people would move like I love, you know, they and then came the the, like plasma and then the, 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 the screen. I mean, you know, now it's like you feel like you're they're there. And it makes you feel different. When you have a clear picture, it makes you feel, feel different. In the morning, sometimes we put on 92.3, right? Big boy, 92.3, right? I love when he goes into his Luther character. And so, right? <laughs> but if we have it at 92.2, they're static. It makes me feel irritated. If we go to 92.4, I can't hear clear. But at 92.3, we're all laughing. It's clarity. Robin Sharma says, clarity is the DNA of mastery. You want to master something. You want to master husbandhood. You want to master fatherhood. You have, to have be, you have to be clear. You have to be clear. What is it that, what is it that you want for your life? We were just talking with, about Pastor Mauricio's daughter and how she, is, she works in her purpose. She's clear. When you are clear with what you want, waking up early is not a problem. When you're clear with what you, and you're, and you're in that, when you're in, that, well, not duality, but when you are in what you want, staying up late is not a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yesterday, you know, I, I had my, one of my godsons was over. My little one had, had his friend over. We were watching a football game. I said, you know, honey, I'm going to take about an hour and a half because I, I, I have to go and prepare. My kids are like, oh, that, no, I got, I'm going to go and prepare. It, it, wasn't, it didn't feel bad. I actually love preparing leadership because that's my passion. That's, that's what I'm clear about. When the promise is clear, the price is easy. Do you train people? Me? Yeah. No, I got, I got a mentor that trains people. Oh, but have, does, has anyone ever seen a just say, oh, can you help me with my nutrition? Uh, have you ever? Uh, well, not just a little small. Just a little piece. You, you know that most people won't do what you say, right? That's if you say eat well, they're not. Yep. If you say reduce the carbs, they won't. Nope. You know that, right? Yeah. yeah. Because it's not clear. Yeah. Yeah. But you know who it's clear for? The man who just had a heart attack, his, he'll change his diet forever. Because now, now things are clear. And sometimes God may give you a heart attack in different aspects of your life. Just so you can be a little more clear, right? Just so you can, oh man, that's, I, I need to make this change. And I'm telling you, you can change without the heart attack. When you're clear. You can change before the stroke. You can change before the divorce. You can change before the bankruptcy. For some of us, we need that. Because, because we had lost clarity. I remember 10 and a half years ago, we lost everything. Everything, right? And I, I just what I did when I was 24 came up and I said, God. And then for the next couple of years, he showed me what, why we lost everything. Because I was kind of changing. And he needed to smooth things out in my life. He needed to remove some of my impurities that I had adapted to. Does that make sense? Yep, yeah. So now, second time around, you know, like Shalimar, second time around, now things are much clearer. So I, I, I will willingly pay the price. Step number one to increase energy and decrease duality is gratitude. Step number two is clar clarity. Step number three, this is so important. Everything that you do should be intentional. Life is too short to waste time. Everything you do should be intentional. What is your intention with coming here? I'll take my intention. I, I got my intention. Those five pieces, those, those five keys to roar. I got, I, I, the minute he said the first one, I said, oh, okay, I, I know why I'm here now. Because I need to be fed, right? So everything you do has to be intentional you don't, don't don't show up to a gathering without an intention don't show up to work without an intention right don't show up you know otherwise you're going to fall into just 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 being a never was my mentor said he said you want a, a has been has been but a never was never was you don't want to be a never was you don't want your grandchild to sit on your lap and you're 75 years old and say Weren't you around when the internet came out? Yeah. Did you take advantage of it? No. Weren't you around when the, but what about all that? Weren't you in the midst of all this history? Oh, you weren't intentional. Be intentional with what you say. Be intentional with what you do. Be intentional with what you stand for. Okay. Key number one, gratitude. Key number two is clarity. Key number three is being intentional. Key number four is this is so important. Consistency. Man, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I clearly remember when I received Christ into my life. I thought things were going to be great. Things were terrible. <laughs> things were terrible and they got worse. <laughs> and my aunt told me, because we received Christ through my aunt, and my aunt told me it's going to get bad. I'm like, and you want me to sign up for this? And it's going to get bad? I said, what? I, she said, but you have to be consistent. You have to show up every day. You have to prepare yourself every day. And I remember that, I, and, and you guys have probably heard this, consistency, consistency grows when motivation dies. See, right now you may feel better than when you first came. That's not, that's not the important part. 
important part is how you're going to feel tomorrow night when, when you're by yourself. How are you going to wake up Monday morning when you don't have Pastor Mauricio, you don't have your brother here, and you're, you're in the game of life? How are you going to feel Monday at 9 when you walk into that job and that micromanager's on your back again? Consistency. Consistency. Keep your eyes, as Dr. Martin Luther King would say, keep your eyes on the prize. Consistency. And if you practice consistency, consistency gives birth to motivation and inspiration. People get tired. They're like, no, th- th- there's that guy that's always happy. I'm, I'm not going to, I'm going to stop messing with him. I'm going to mess with this guy because I, re- I can irritate that person. I can't irritate that person anymore because you've become consistent of character, gratitude, clarity, being intentional, okay, being consistent. Number five, this, 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 if, there, if there's a word, if there's an idea, if there's a key that changed my life in the last couple of years, especially going through COVID, was awareness. As human beings, as human beings, we are the only people, we're the only species that can practice what's called metacognition. Metacognition is the ability to think about what you're thinking about. I'll repeat this again. Metacognition is the, is the ability to think about what you are thinking about. In the last five, 10 years, I've become more aware of my relationship. I can't tell you how many times because of my ego and pride in my first 10 years marriage, We'd have discussions, disagreements because of me. And in the last 10 years, oh, they've dwindled down to hardly anything because I think about what I'm thinking about. And often I'll just, thank you, Jesus. And my wife's like, what did you do? Nothing, nothing at all. We're good. We are really good. But I'm thinking of where, how I would have reacted 10 years ago, right? How I would have been sensitive to things 10 years ago. How I would have been hurt 10 years ago. Awareness. Awareness. It's a gift. You all have a gift. That's called, that the gift of metacognition. The ability to think about what you're thinking about. And you can say those words. How many of us have ever said hurtful things to people we love? And the minute that word comes out, you're trying to grab it back. See, a human being, a human mind cannot think and emote simultaneously. A man cannot think, a man cannot be in a state of thought and a state of emotion at the same time. And emotion will always be thought all the time. So if you think about what you're thinking about, you can avoid that emotional state. My mentor said, emotion is the conflict of all truth. I repeat this again. Emotion is the conflict of all truth. God is not emotional. God God is a God of principle, right? He doesn't fall out of love with us. He loves us, period. Thank God, okay? Emotion is the conflict of all truth. That's that's, That's your mental tattoo, don't get a real tattoo, just a mental tattoo. And again, I'm, I've become more aware. It's, it's something that we work on all the time, every day. I become more aware of my emotions. And I do my best to control the emotions so I can live more in the moment. Does this make sense to you guys? Does this make sense to you guys? Number six. Now, you want to... Now you want to align your emotions with your intention. What does that mean? That means you want to feel what you think and you want to think what you feel. Like my, my son said, what you think and feel becomes real. Mental tattoo. What you think and feel becomes real. What you think and feel becomes real. That's why he told me 20, that's why he told me uh, almost 30 years ago, I can't ask you questions. Because I can't tell you something and you feel different. Right? 
He said, you can't, you can't do that. What you think and what you feel, what resonates in your mind and what resonates in your body has to be connected. That's the only way we see personal and long-term transformation. If, 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 if we only move by what we think and it's not supported by how we feel, it's only going to be temporary. I promise you that. But if we align our emotional state with our intentionality, now it, now it deepens us. It goes deep into the subconscious mind. And the subconscious mind, check this out, the subconscious, the, the mind, the mind has three main functions. To keep you alive, to keep you healthy, and here's the third one. To keep your internal in harmony with your external. Okay? Keep you alive, keep you healthy, and make sure that your internal is in harmony with your external. That is why many of us sabotage ourselves we, when we find a healthy relationship, when we step into, into a great business opportunity, when we step into a great environment, we sabotage ourselves because our internal doesn't have that conditioning yet. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we're going to look, we're going to attract what we know. Okay, so you want to make sure that in order to increase your energy, you want to make sure that your emotional state is supporting your intention. And lastly, number seven, relax in order to receive. Relax in order to receive. Everybody take a deep breath. Everyone take another deep breath. God wants to bless you. God wants, it. God wants to work on you. God wants to manifest his greatness through you. That's how, he, that's how we have these amazing testimonies. God wants to do these. God wants to use you as, as his servant to do these amazing works. And in the process, you will get 10 times what you can ever imagine. But you got to relax. You got to chill out. Just relax and receive. Just relax. You can't be all tight, all wound it up. Just relax in order to receive. And the moment, the moment we, this is not something that maybe you're going to do like tomorrow, but if you, if you start to work on this and you start to work on yourself, your life is going to change and it's going to change forever. Just like my life has changed, just like m many people's lives have changed. It's going to change, it's going to change forever. But it, it begins with you. It begins with you taking that decision and saying, today will be today will be the first day of my new life today today i am renewed in thought and i will take control of my life i will assume i will assume all responsibility my pastor said i'll make that call today and said hey that's on me whether you agree or not that's okay i just need to i that's that's on me and today's and some some of you are going to get home and you're gonna be like I'm a new man. They're going to say, no, you're not. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. And that's okay because you've created that environment. So you got to work yourself out of that environment, but you can and you will. Fair enough? Yes. Thank you guys so much. Oh, sure. All right, guys. Can I, can I get an usher to bring that up, please? Thank you, somebody. Oh, yeah, you can take that. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Did you guys get some good out of that? Oh, yeah. Man, that's so rich. We, we are going to... Uh, Thank you. We are going can to uh, can I, can I upload the, these Thank messages you. on our YouTube. So uh, if you didn't take notes fast enough, don't worry about it. We're going to cover you. We got you taken care of. But uh, this is a Q&A time. Simeon, where are you at? Come on up here. Simeon, Simeon has fire. worked with us. He's, uh, he's a dancer. <laughs> <laughs> he's a dancer. He's 21 years old. Uh, he dances, um, you know, uh, as a calling. God blessed him in a very unique and special way. We've done work together here at Elevate with him. And, uh, and I, I wanted to bring him up, too, because, you know, that spoken word that you saw in the screen during worship, uh, 
when when Simeon, I, I posted something and Simeon messaged me and he said, uh, hey, Pastor, uh, hey, thanks for that encouragement. And if you ever need anything, you need me to come in and do another, you know, dance or whatever. And this guy, they, he just loves Elevate. Yes. And I just said, uh, uh, he's, he's like, he's like, yeah, just, you know, hit me up. Whatever you need, I'm here for you. And I said, hey, well, we have a men's conference called... Uh, you know, Roar, uh, I said, you don't, I mean, maybe you can dance, maybe not. I'm like, how about this? I'm like, you know, we have a creative meeting um, on Thursday. And uh, I'm like, just come to a creative meeting, man. If you see anything uh, that God puts on your heart creative-wise, if it's a dance, great, we'll dance. If it's something else, we'll do something else. And he said, absolutely, awesome, I'll come. And, and you know what I loved about this kid? This man, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, is is the fact that when he showed up to our meeting, he said, um, he's like, can I just share with what, what God placed on my heart? Amen. And and what you got in that spoken word was the word that God gave him for us. And so uh, we didn't get together in a group and start writing his this whole spoken word. He said, God placed this on my heart for this conference. And so I said, okay, great. Uh, I said, well, let's do well, it. wasn't even a spoken word. He just said, this is the word that God gave me for you guys. Can I just share it with you? And, you know, here you have a guy who's, you know, he's, he dances for the industry. He loves Jesus. He's passionate. He's a non-negotiable guy. He won't, he won't negotiate with sin. Uh, he won't sacrifice uh, God's relationship um, for anything. And so when he did that, I said, you know, Simeon, I said, we'll do the spoken word. But you know what I want you to do? I said, there'll probably be some young people there that need to hear from someone like you as well that uh that love jesus and and that and that can do what they're called to do and not and not compromise their walk with god yes. and so uh so let's give it up for sam yes, let's just say thank absolutely. you so much yeah it's sam it's sam right here my man all right so here's some questions and 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 uh uh we'll we'll throw these out did is there any more text questions guys anything frank or anybody whoever where's frank Someone grab Frank for me, please. Anybody, John, you can run. Grab Frank. Grab anybody. Thank you so much. Here's the first question. How did your earlier career choice lead you to where you are now? Let's start with you. So how did my 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 first career lead How did me your earlier career because you were a chiropractor, right? Yeah. Uh, before yes. you, you yes. went into your business. Yes, that's a, that's a, whoever asked that question, that's an, an outstanding question. So I um I wanted to be an attorney when I was 14, 15 years old. And I was at school, and they had, we had this career day. And this attorney showed up. I was the f in the front row to that attorney class, that, you know, that, the class where there was going to be an attorney. And he showed up late. And he, he, he was very unhealthy, and he looked very unhealthy. He was profusely perspiring. He had a suit that was way too small and a red polyester tie with a big stain on it. I'm 15 years old in the front row thinking, that's not what I want my future to look like. So I came home, and my mom said, um, do you want to join with us? Do you want to come with us? We're going to go to the chiropractor. I didn't know what a chiropractor was. So I went, and it was a small office in a small area. It's called Southgate. And I saw this small Latino chiropractor coming in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. And I thought, and the people, when they'd come out, they, maybe physically they were the same, but there was something in their spirit that was just different. And I was 15 years old, and I said, we got back in the car. I said, Mom, Dad, I want to be a chiropractor. They're like, but you've never been adjusted. I said, that, if I can help people feel the way that man makes people feel, perfect. So I went on my path. I graduated and opened my first office. I had no understanding of business, of marketing. So my mentor said, you're going to give chiropractic care classes. I said, what, do you mean, what is that? He said, you're going to speak to your new patients about the story. I said, you want me to tell them the story? He says, you're going to tell them the story. So I began to have Mondays in English and Wednesdays in Spanish chiropractic care classes. Never, ever, ever guessing that through my care classes, I was going to find my purpose. So God used my chiropractic profession to find my gift of speaking because I never thought I could do this ever in fact my first two three four remember I was I was doing two to three care classes a week and I did this for three years my first few care classes were terrible terrible stuttering stammering forgetting things but then things started to to change and 
office started to grow and my first practice, I got it up to, I was seeing about 180 patients a day. Then I took that message and I duplicated and within three years, we opened up seven health centers. Then I removed myself from practice because I learned the difference between being a propreneur and an entrepreneur. And I'm removing my, myself from practice and I started just coaching my chiropractor. And then it became a, a speaking industry. Then it became to coaching. Then it just continued growing. So God used my first platform to go through the difficult, to begin to shape me and mold me into what he, had al- what, what he already had planned for me, but I never, ever imagined. And remember this, remember this. I had invested about a quarter million dollars into my chiropractic profession. So it was a big, it was a big decision to change careers. But when the promise is clear, the price is easy. That's awesome. Very good. Simeon, how about you, man? I know that you're 21 years old, but man, let me tell you something. Age is just a number. Tell me Amen. about you, man. Uh, just someone that may be young out there that's, mm. that's trying to, you know, step into their, their purpose. How, how did you even choose dancing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. So I love the scripture. It says in Romans 12, verse 2, do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yep. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. And a lot of us live in our will, but not God's will. And our prayer every day, my prayer was, Lord, your will be done in my life. And a lot of times when we want his will to be done, we still want to see fit our way. And it started off in 2009. I would jump rope and I went to the Junior Olympics. Hmm. And so I was just Corbin Blue. I thought I was Corbin Blue and jump in. So I looked up to him. I was in Corbin Blue. I just thought I was in full mode to just do that all my life. And then when I moved deeper into L.A., they didn't have a jump rope team that I was a part of that I thought, okay, maybe I could do this some more. So I got into theater. And when I got into theater, I said, no, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And from that, I thought it was acting, but it really was dance. And from acting, I realized this is my skill, but dance is my gift. Mm -hmm. And anything that will be a gift from God, you won't even want to get paid for it. You're like, God, I can do this all day, any day, any (laughs) time. Because it's just you get love from it, you get joy. And from that, anything that's your gift will always end up giving God glory. Mm -hmm. And so from that, I found out what my gift was. And after I dug into it, I got into the industry in 2016. And when I got into the industry at 2016, I didn't see people that love Jesus and still do what they love to do. Mm. And I was like, Lord, who do I look up to? There's no one really in my sphere where I can say, ah, there he is or ah, there she is doing what they love to do, but still lifting up the name Jesus. And so I said, God, I don't really see it, but use me. We have to be to the point where Moses used the way that God even used a staff in Moses' hand. Mm -hmm. He doesn't care who you are. He even used the unqualified. Mm. He's not looking for your money. He's looking for your faith. Mm -hmm. So in moments where I say, God, I don't see it, but I trust that you would even use me as an example of young people that don't know who God is and that you can still work in your gift. Through the conviction of the Holy Spirit, he will still elevate you. When man closed the door, God would open it. Mm -hmm. And so when I got into the industry, there were specific things that I could not do just because it wasn't where I was going. And because of that, there were so many no's. But when man says no, God always has a bigger yes for you. Mm-hmm. And so I had to learn that I couldn't walk by what my sight was. I had to walk by faith. And faith is not blind. Faith sees. But faith sees in the supernatural. Faith won't see beyond your, it won't see in your circumstance. It will see beyond your circumstance. So I remember in 2020, I said, God, I trust you. I don't care what anybody else is doing. I trust you. And because of that, I've been able to do so many more jobs than I've ever done Hmm. when I decided to not lean on my own understanding. Mm -hmm. But in all my ways, I acknowledge him and he directed my path. Come on, somebody. Give it up. I love it. (laughs) I like this one. Um, Where'd it go? Uh, What would you do, uh, Dr. Lewis, differently if you can go back in time? What would you do differently? Gosh. You know, it's, um, you know, they ask that question often, right? And in, in, in the reality, uh, I, I don't know how many things I would do different because then God would never have worked on me the way he worked on me, right? Because yeah. I, 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 you need, you know, sometimes you, you think, uh, oh, th- this, this young man said, oh, if, he was, uh, he was at a John C. Maxwell m- meeting, right, seminar, uh, and uh, this guy came up to John C. Maxwell and said, oh, if I would have only met you 25 years ago, hmm. and John C. said, you, wor- you would have learned nothing because I'm not who I am today 25 years ago, right? So hmm. I, I, I believe that everything happens on God's time, you know, and so I believe that 
Um, could, could I have been uh, a better husband or a better father or a better leader? Uh, 100%. But now at, at, in my season, I value the, the valleys. I put tremendous value in the valleys because that's where I have, I have grown the most. Like I said, 10 years ago, when we lost everything, I mean, when we lost our homes, our investments, our cars, we lost everything. Uh, I mean, we woke up and there was never a time that we had multiple streams of income and that was shut completely closed. Mm. Now, 10 years later, that's my greatest testimony, mm. right? That's my greatest message. And because of that, I'm able to connect with so many more people. You know, this young man is, you know, he's a good looking man, he's athletic, he's gifted. There may be people, there may be 18, 19 year olds thinking, I'm not like that, right? But when you share the challenges and when you share the trials, now you're connecting with everybody because who here hasn't gone through a challenge? Absolutely. Like they say, you're either getting into a challenge in the midst of a challenge or getting out of a challenge. You're either going through troubles in the midst of troubles or coming out of troubles. So would I have wanted to, to make some change? Sure. But I, I value so much the work that God has done with me, especially through the most difficult times. I love it. Yes. I love it. Um, as far as like choosing your call, what, what helped you discover that? I would have to say, um, my parents, first of all, dad, where if you're in there, you stand up, say hi, dad, <laughs> stand up. Can you give a clap for my dad real quick? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I would say my parents, because they literally in the Bible, it says train up a child in the way they should go. Right. And so literally they trained me up and they put me in these things and they supported me through it. So they had to stay in those late dance classes. I mean, job, those Dad. dance rehearsals were for like 12 hours. <laughs> and I had school the next morning, and then it was the same thing the next day. And then, oh, okay, that was only 12 hours, but that's not the actual filming day. So it will be these things that they would have to continually do. But because they supported me in what my gifting was, it allowed me to fully fulfill what God had for me. And so also watching my circle, because I was at a point where I lost who I was because of my friend group. I always say if you're hanging around five dummies, you'll be the six. If you hang around five young, my five millionaires, you will be the six. So it matters who your circle is. So at one point, I lost myself because of the group. And because the group that I was in in the industry, they were going left. I was like, okay. But I still love you, Jesus. But I was like literally going vacillating between two opinions. But it got to the point where 2020 happened. And who's hanging out with anybody? Really nobody. Everybody's like, six feet. Back up. What you got? I wasn't about that, but a lot of people were like six feet. So I got a chance to actually get my character rebuilt. And I got a chance to realize, okay, if I'm going to do this, I need to pay attention to who's around me. Mm -hmm. And that allowed me to really open my eyes. Do I still want to do this? Because you get to the point where you love the gifting, but you're like, will it be something? Mm -hmm. Will this come out of anything? So I think that the support, the honor that I had to give back because that's where also young people miss as they get something, they forget to come back and say, thank you. Mm -hmm. They forget to say, I appreciate what you've done for me. Mm -hmm. that's right. And I think that Very that's good. so good because I just want to pull this up real quick. In first Peter five, five, it says, likewise, ye younger submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject to one another and be clothed with humility for God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. So I feel like a lot of people get mixed up where you can be dope and be humble at the same time. Yep. You don't have to be like, oh, I just killed that. I don't need to uh, submit to anybody. No, you can know that that was only but the grace of God. You did that job. You did that, whatever you did. But also be humble enough to say, but God, I'm going to thank whoever booked me. I'm going to thank whoever mm -hmm. took mm -hmm. me to that rehearsal. I'm going to thank those. It's the gratitude, gratitude that will get you far. Because the talent will get you to the door, but it's the grace and everything thing else with that that will keep you there. Yeah, Absolutely. that's right. So I, would say that. Absolutely. I love that. Great Absolutely. job. Awesome. Thank you. Give it up. That's awesome. I know we went a little bit over, but I just wanted to, you know, just give a few more questions. Dr. Luis, we'll end with this one. Um, let's see. What's a really good one? What, what, uh, how do you bounce back um, when you've made multiple mistakes or various poor decisions or um, or you've been in a place of disappointment. How do you, what do you do to bounce back? Like, mm -hmm. what would you, what would you tell someone um, that, I mean, you lost everything, right? I can only imagine what that felt like. Mm -hmm. uh, but what do you do? Yeah. Well, I, I, I can tell you what, 
And it's not I, it's, it's m- both my wife and I. That's a key component. Not for you yet, but that's a key component. Your spouse is going to make a tremendous difference in your life, positive or negative. Your spouse will make a tremendous difference in your life. So make sure that it's the spouse that God wants for you. Uh, not for you. You're so young. You're so young. But um, I was at Panera Bread, and we were already losing everything. And um, they were looking for my car to repossess it. I'm not going to ask you who's had their car repossessed, but you know what I'm talking about. And so I kept moving it around, <laughs> trying, to, <laughs> trying to hide my car. <laughs> but I was in a meeting, an hour and a half meeting, and, and it stood there for an hour and a half. Panera Bread on the corner of Lone Hill and Gladstone in Glendora, where my kids go to school, where people know us. And uh, <laughs> the young lady walked in. She's like, who owns a black uh, Escalade? And I'm, I'm, I'm with a prospect. I'm like, oh, dear God, someone please raise their hand. No one raised their hand. She's like, who owns a black Escalade? No one raised their hand. I'm like, I, I, I do. She's like, if I was you, I'd go out right now. So I run out, and the guy's taking the car, and I'm running after him, literally like I'm running after him because my baby's car seat was in the back. I said, leave me the car seat. And he literally, I'm a very talented guy, he reaches in the back and throws the car seat out. I don't know how he did that. And I, <laughs> and I pick up the car seat. I'm in the middle of the parking lot. I turn around, and my prospect is looking at me. And I was just telling my prospect how we're going to build this business and everything, and he's looking at me like, are you serious? And I got home, and I was, I was embarrassed, and I was ashamed. But what I didn't do, I didn't do two things. I didn't do two things. I didn't lose faith in God. And equally as important, I didn't lose faith in myself. Because when you're down, you begin to lose your self-identity. And you begin to believe that you are what people say you are. You're not. You are what God has declared you to be. And I just, I just stood on those two, who God has called me to be and who I believe I am. And two years later, we have replenished everything and 10 times more. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus.